Well, the, the British security agencies are desperate not to be involved in any torture. Unlike the Americans, the Americans have not signed up to international legislation, meaning they're, they're not going to be uh, tried by an international court for human rights abuses. Britain has. Therefore, anyone who's been involved directly or indirectly with torture could be subject and will be, should be subject to international law. So they're desperate, firstly, that that's not going to happen. And secondly, of course, they're desperate to conceal the involvement of Britain in this. Uh, in your report, you mentioned that uh, MI5, MI6 have admitted using evidence which the Americans gained under torture. However, there's also a litany of cases now of people who are held, rendered, held in Guantanamo, in Bagram, in various other centres around the world, uh, who've said that they were actually interrogated by British agents during the course of, uh, course of that. That's been the case of a number of Libyans who are taking legal action against, uh, against the British security forces for that. We also know that British airports have been used for the rendering of some of these hostages who are being sent to be tortured in countries like Jordan or Egypt. The British involvement runs very deep. and Britain is clearly embarrassed about this uh, and is clearly desperate to keep a lid on it. I just how much they know. And we now also know that the Home Secretary, the Internal Affairs Minister in Britain, met with the Intelligence Committee a number of occasions, some 22 occasions, I believe, yes. including right before the publication was released. And clearly, the British are lobbying and being lobbied in a very high level that they did not want any of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, released. So, and that takes so place your, at the highest level. So in your opinion, do we need, in, in the UK, an inquiry similar to the Absolutely. inquiry that the Senate has actually Absolutely. produced? Absolutely. And it's actually an indictment of Britain that I think this is unlikely to happen because the whole murky world of the intelligence services is largely but never really been revealed to us. And I suspect the most we will get is some sort of almost an internal inquiry into this, if it happens at all, an internal inquiry, or perhaps an inquiry by some MPs, but an insider's inquiry. And we need something much more like the Senate Committee, which took place in the United States, which despite of the, of the furore over the report, I think it has to be said, clearly did a thorough job in investigating this. I mean, it stands as a model for what actually should be applied in this country, in Britain, to this case. But I suspect, as usual in Britain, members of the elite and former members of the security forces will be charged with investigating other members of the elite, and in this case, the security forces. We'll never really get to the bottom of it. So, so in your view, uh, in regards to this whole torture uh, court being carried out by intelligence agencies, do you think these intelligence torture techniques resulted in actually protecting security for public as a whole? No, I don't think so whatsoever. And I'll give you an instance of this, that you don't need to agree with in any sense, but for the number of people who have been rendered, tortured, or held in prisons like Guantanamo, who have actually joined jihadist groups as a consequence of that, demonstrates that actually if you torture someone, if you or I were tortured, you'd be very angry about it. That's the obvious response, and you'd want revenge. And therefore, America and Britain and their allies are creating a growing number of people who want revenge on the West, on their, uh, on their allies. And if anything, this is creating a much more dangerous situation. And if you want a proof of this, I mean, it's obvious if you just look at the, a map of terrorism around the world. In 2001, at the time of 9-11, it would be very much concentrated in a small number of countries. Today, we're talking about a huge increase, I mean, for instance, into Africa, of terrorist-related violence. And of course, the rise of much more formidable organizations like ISIS in, uh, in Iraq, and, uh, Iraq and Syria. And while, of course, that's reprehensible, we have to recognize that really it's Britain and America who are creating the conditions for what's called blowback, for people wanting revenge on them. You know? yes. And therefore, torturing people, one, it's not a very good way of getting intelligence because people will tell you anything they, anything they can at a certain point in order to stop being tortured. But secondly, as well, it creates massive resentment in swathes of the world against the United States and its allies. Yes. Mr. Chris Banbury, political analyst, thank you very much for joining us over the phone from London.